Good day, great people, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome, welcome. I'm Jam, like Jelly, and today I'm really excited to dive into all things UGC. Specifically, what we're going to talk about today is contracts. Should you have one? Should you not? Let's get into it. Now, I've got my tea here because we're going to spill some tea today, okay? I'm going to share a little bit of stories, but specifically what we're going to talk about are contracts with UGC. Should you have one? Should you not? And if you do, what should be included to make sure that you are safe and protected? First things first, should you have a UGC contract? Absolutely, yes. In fact, I cannot stress the importance enough about having a UGC contract. This not only protects you as a creator, but it also protects the client. It determines the terms of the mutually agreed upon projects. What are we agreeing upon? Are we going to do one photo? Are we doing one photo with two hooks? Are we doing five stills or five photos? five videos, what are the terms of the contract? You wanna make sure that that is outlined and it's very clear, easy to understand for both the client and for the creator. A contract helps determine what you're gonna be creating, how much of it you're gonna be creating, creating, when are the deliverables due by, any other details that are very specific and useful and needed for both parties. For example, does a client need the content delivered within two to three days? That can typically be a quick turnaround time from receiving the product to scripting, editing, getting the content together, filming it, all the details that go in between there. The standard time is between three days and seven days. So if they need that early, that quick turnaround time, you might add a rush fee uh, for you to be able to deliver that on time. So as with any contract, you want to make sure that whatever the details are, are agreed upon between both the client and the creator. Now, there are a few contracts that are out there that you can go and purchase, but there are certain things that you want to look out for between a really good UGC contract and then those that might not be beneficial for you. So let's talk about that. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to look for in a really good UGC contract is force majeure. Now, force majeure protects both the client and the creator from any liability or obligation of any extraordinary event that might happen outside of either party's control. Now, these can be things like a riot, crime, an epidemic, any sudden legal change that might inhibit one of the parties from fulfilling the details of the obligations that are within that contract. However, Force majeure does exclude any acts of God that would actually be covered within a separate portion of the contract. The number two thing that you want to look out for within a good UGC contract is perpetuity. Now, I know that can be a legal long term that seems way out of your realm. It's okay. We're going to talk about it. Essentially, what perpetuity means is forever forever. That means that a brand might be able to own and have the rights over your content forever. There is no expiration date. This essentially meaning that it doesn't have a fixed maturity date, doesn't end. A lot of times in UGC contracts, you might see where they say in perpetuity for your likeness, for your brand image, for your content. They are able to edit it. They're able to do whatever they want, forever. They can change it. They essentially own the right fully to that content forever. Or you might see within a contract where they have certain limits of time frames of how long you either are posting this on your personal page or how long the brand is able to use and have right over this content. Maybe that's three months, maybe it's six months, whatever is agreed upon, you will see those terms within the contract. Now that you know a little bit about perpetuity, I've got a story for y'all. Let's get into it. So I almost signed a contract where they would have full rights over the content in perpetuity. Let's explain a little bit further. So a brand reached out to me wanting to do a partnership. It was actually going to do a mother-daughter partnership. So I was like, this is cute. This sounds fun. I like the brand, their mission. So I was like, yes, let's do it. Uh, the payment was great. I felt like I was comfortable with the payment. Then they sent me the contract. And as I read through the contract, not only would they have full rights and editing usage, it was going to be for five photos. 
wasn't too difficult. I was like, yes, I can absolutely do that. However, when I read the contract, it had full rights over those five photos, all editing privileges over the, over the photos. I would not have any editing privileges over them. They would own it in perpetuity. They would own my likeness, my brand image, everything about me and those five photos, they would own completely. They can edit it. They can crop it. They could do whatever they want. They could sell it to whoever they want. And it's theirs. They own it because I would have signed my rights over. Now y'all know I did not do that. So because I read the contract, I was able to look and determine, hey, I'm not okay with this. I don't feel comfortable. In fact, I do not agree to the terms of this contract. Therefore, I wish you all the best of luck on your search and your partnerships. Unfortunately, it will not be with me. And I kept it pushing because <laughs> ain't no way. <laughs> ain't no way, y'all. For some creators, that might work well for them. And for them, I wish them the best of their luck on their journey. Baby, for me, it don't work. It don't work. There will be another company. There will be another partnership that I'll be able to capitalize and we'll be able to make amazing content with because we both agree to the terms and we both feel comfortable with those terms. All right, so tip number three of things that you want to see within a UGC contract are the payment terms, of course. There's essentially two types of payment terms. You can either have a gifted collab, which I'll talk about in just a little bit, or you can have a paid collab. So when you have a paid collaboration, you wanna look and see what are the terms of that payment. So is it X amount of money for one vertical 15 to 30 second video or is it for five photos what are the terms of that payment then also you want to look for whitelisting the term whitelisting is actually just a term for if you post it on your own personal pages so not only do the brands own the right to this content they can post it on theirs but you also are given the privileges it's within the contract that you feel comfortable you support this brand and you don't mind posting it on your own page that's essentially what whitelisting is usually creators might charge an extra fee whether it is 50 percent or some other mutually agreed upon rate to whitelist the ad or whatever it is to whitelist it on your own page. Either way, you want to make sure that you're looking at the payment terms within the contract and that both you as a creator and the client agree to whatever those payment terms are. Now, there's also opportunities for you to do gifted collabs within UGC. Now, this can be kind of a heated topic right now. I've seen a lot of creators say, hey, this is how I got started. I did gifted collabs to not only increase my experience, my exposure, to increase my portfolio and what I'm doing, but also as a result of those gifted collabs, I was able to turn those into paid opportunities, paid collaborations because I either exceeded the status quo or I exceeded what their expectations were for that collaboration. In fact, I have done some gifted collabs. When I first started out, if it was a brand I really loved and I really supported, I was okay with doing a gifted collab. I always negotiated. Of course, you always want to negotiate the terms of the contract, but I did negotiate. Sometimes it was like, you know what? I don't mind doing a gifted collab. I want to make sure that I'm increasing my portfolio and improving in my craft. So what I did is you might accept a gifted collab and they want one photo or one 15 to 30 second video. So what I did was I took that and I elevated it just a little bit, take it a step higher. I actually gave them three different videos that they could use. One was an organic ad, which doesn't have any words. It might have some words on the screen, but it's usually to music. It's something a little bit shorter. Those might convert really quick and they work very well on certain social media platforms. I also submitted a video where I had the actual agreed upon terms, what they were looking for. But instead, it was one video that I shot and I had two different hooks. Now, if you remember from my previous video, the hook is the first one to three seconds of your content. That's what hooks someone to stop scrolling and to look at your content. Depending on how the hooks do, your target audience, one hook might perform better than another. And so what I did is I sent them an email, said, I really enjoyed doing this. I love getting to partner with this brand. 
and I, I've submitted three videos. You'll see two are the exact same. They just have two different hooks. You can see which hook works best with your target audience. Feel free to use both of them. They love that content so much that not only did they pay me for the extra video that I sent, but I also got another opportunity to create more content for this brand. For me, it was a win-win. I not only got to increase my portfolio and my experience, but then I also ended up getting paid for what started out as a gifted opportunity. On the other hand, you might hear some creators say, your time is more valuable. Do not accept any gifted collabs. We are only doing paid collabs, gifted collabs, do not pay the bills. And they're not wrong. They're not wrong. I can only speak from my experience how paid and gifted collabs have worked really well for me and being able to convert those into paid opportunities in the future. Ultimately though, the decision is yours. You do what is right and what's best for you as a creator. If this is your full-time source of income, maybe you don't have the capacity or the bandwidth to accept gifted collabs at this time. Or maybe you have improved your skill and your craft and you say, okay, I think I'm ready. I've expanded myself. I've got X amount of partnerships. I'm extremely busy right now and I don't have the bandwidth to support any gifted collabs at this time. Or maybe you're starting out and you say, you know what, this is something that I want to do for fun. Maybe you have a full-time career like I do as well and you're doing this to just challenge yourself. Maybe grow a little bit more, make some awesome extra money on the side. Nothing ever wrong with that. Then, you know, if you want to accept a gifted collab from a partnership that you feel very passionate about, then do it. The choice is all yours. Don't feel like you have to go one way or the other. But what you do have to do is always read the terms of the contract and make sure that you agree to whatever it is that is laid out and the client also agrees as well. By now you've probably started to realize that there are a lot of different terms that go over the normal person's head who doesn't dive into legal terms and everything on a day-to-day -day basis. These are things like arbitration and limited liability, terms of conditions, the signage, all those details that if you aren't immersed in this world, those might be kind of tricky for you to really understand. And you know I got you. So I've created a contract that has been legally reviewed, edited, and approved by a team of lawyers that takes out all of the guesswork for you. You don't need to really understand, well, you do need to understand, but you don't need to do any of the legal work or get legal fees, all that stuff. I've taken that out for you. I've created it. I'm selling it for purchase on my Etsy shop. So you can go in, you can download it. And what's so great about it is that it's an instant download, number one, and it's completely editable. So if there's something in there that you want to change, maybe you want the title to be your own LLC or your own UGC business, or whatever the client that you're working with, what are the terms of your specific contract, you can go in, edit those details, save it as a PDF and send it off. You can own your own contract. I've taken that work out of it for you so that you don't have to, that's one less thing that you have to focus on. You get to doing what you love. I created this contract because I know already that UGC is so new. We've got a lot of people who are doing their research, trying to learn and starting on their craft. And the last thing that you wanna do is try to determine what are these legal terms? How do I figure all this stuff out? This is way above my head. Sign a 15 page contract that I don't even know what I just signed. Did I just sign over my rights? I have no idea. I've taken all that guesswork out, out of it for you. I don't want for you to get taken advantage of. And I want to make sure that you as a creator on this journey have all the tools and the details that you need to be successful and to really own in on your craft. I told y'all I was gonna be here with you every step of the way. And part of that backing for me is to make sure that the tools that you do have are legally backed. You can feel safe knowing that what you have is actually backed you by a legal team, you're safe. There are a few other UGC contracts that are out there that might be really great. I know that mine might be one of a few that is backed by a legal or an attorney team that you can feel safe knowing that it's legal, you're taken care of. And what's even better about this is that it is a short three page editable document. So long are the days where you have to read through a 15 page contract 
ain't nobody got time for that. Like you, you've lost me after the first two pages anyways. So I've taken all of that out for you and I wanna make sure that y'all are set up for success. I'm gonna put a link to my Etsy store as well as my stand store down below where you can go in, you can see my contract, see all the things that's included in there and then you can download it. If you want it, purchase it, it's yours and I hope that you enjoy it and I hope that it works out well for you. If you've also enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and be on the lookout because I'm looking to post two YouTube videos every week where I give you resources, tools, information, motivational, everything that you need in your life as well as in your UGC journey. Let's get into it, y'all.